Hey guys, Trevor the Great here again with a Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report. I know a lot of you guys have been calling for a Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report, and I deliver. Unfortunately, Warhammer Fantasy is not very prevalent in uh, where I go to college. It's uh, There's a, a couple stores nearby, but as I found, nobody plays Warhammer Fantasy uh, within a decent radius of uh, where I live. So coming back home for the holidays, I was able to get a game of Warhammer Fantasy in uh, at my local hobby store. Hopefully I'll get a couple more in with a, a slightly better army, um, but we'll see how that goes. So this is my uh, my quote-unquote high elves versus uh, some lizard men. Now these high elves, for those who don't know, are actually based on uh, historical Romans. They do use historical models and um, and fight with a, a very historically uh, Roman uh, strategy behind them. Um, so basically, it's a pretty fluffy army. Uh, it's all proxy models. There's actually no actual GW models in there. So for uh, for those GW purists, you can feel free to tear me up if you want to. That's fine. I'll just probably delete your comments. No, I'm just kidding. I won't. I'm very democratic about the whole thing. But um, basically, the way this works is that I have uh, Sea Guard units, and those are my uh, my legionary cohorts. Now, legionaries, uh, for those who don't know, in historically brought a number of uh, throwing javelin called pila into battle. And uh, these uh, these javelins were very heavy and meant to pierce armor and shields and things like that. Um, and so that's uh, what I used to justify their uh, the their use of bows. Um, they uh, obviously P Pila did not have the same range as a bow would in uh, in Warhammer Fantasy, but I figure they probably um, did a lot more damage closer up, so it all probably works out. Um, I also have a Praetorian cohort now. Historically, the Praetorians were the basically police of a, uh, a Roman city, uh, generally Rome, but um, they were they were the most elite soldiers, the most highly uh, the most highly uh, equipped and trained, and um, I'm using them to represent uh, my Phoenix Guard because uh, representing the fact that they're they're very uh, defensive soldiers and uh, and have an undying um, uh, loyalty to to the the city of Rome and and all that you know shenanigans. And then I have an auxiliary archer cohort, which are obviously just archers with longbows. Uh, and then I have two little priests, and they are um, two level two mages um, leading the army. So I, yeah, I guess I have two units of twenty four uh, sea guard, and I have a unit of twenty phoenix guard with uh, the banner of sorcery, and then a unit of twenty um, twenty archers. Uh, I have a prince with a great weapon, the bow of the seafarer, armor of Kalidor, and then I have a um, battle standard bear with. Uh, a battle standard and uh, dragon armor shield. Not much going on on him. Um, and then I have two little uh, two little uh, uh, mages. One of them has a feedback feedback scroll and is running lore of life. The other one has a dispel scroll and is running lore of shadow. So we'll see how those go. I sort I like to switch up my uh, my spell lores a lot uh, playing this army just because I have a lot of options and I like to try out different new things. So uh, life and shadow. We'll see how that goes. Um, so my opponent has a, a big army infantry-wise. He's got, I think, four units of uh, ten skink skirmishers with uh, their little blowpipes. He's got two units of twenty Soros warriors with spears. He's got a big unit of, uh, I think, twenty or so temple guard, um, and they uh, they have they they're accompanying the slan. The slan's got the battle standard, standard of discipline. Um, I think focused rumination. Which gives him the extra dispel dice and soul of stone, which gives him a reroll on the miscast table. Um, he's also got a uh, engine of the gods with um, his little level two skink priest on there. Basically, becomes level three with the engine of the gods and two scar veterans with uh, I think one has a um, the uh, what is it rune sword, which uh, makes him one out of five plus. And the other one has just has a great weapon. So there you have that. Uh, pretty solid army list on my opponent's side. Um, we'll see what I can do to counter it. This photo is actually at the end of turn uh, of my turn one. I ended up going first because I had a much smaller army than my opponent. Um, so basically, my my two uh, legionary units are on each side of that um, each side of that building in the center. We call that impassable, not a normal building, just to make it easy. Um, and they started firing and uh, tried to kill some skinks to cause some panic tests, but that didn't really do much. Um, and then the uh, Praetorians were moving in around the building to try to get into a better position. And the archers were trying to shoot a unit of chameleon skinks, which was just off the photo on the, the bottom left-hand side. 
So this is a, I just realized that I, I, I'd forgotten to take photos for quite a while. So uh, this is going to be, I believe, turn three, uh, just about what's, uh, what's been happening here. So what's been going on is that uh, basically my, my archers, uh, my, um, my sea guard there have been shooting as many shots as they could into the, um, into the stegodon. Uh, I, I ended up getting a lucky shot off with the, um, with the guy with the bow of the seafarer. He ended up killing the, uh, the, the skink priest right off the top very quickly. So that, uh, stopped the engine from being used. Um, and then I did, I think two wounds to the actual stegodon itself and may have killed a crew or so. Um, other than that, I think I did kill two, two guys out of the, uh, temple guard before they hit, but not much, uh, over there. My archers have been shooting at the, uh, the... Chameleon skinks all all game and just been they've been rolling abysmally. I know it's tough to kill a chameleon skinks um, anyway, but it's like I'll get you know two or three hits out of twenty shots and then fail to wound with all of them, so things like that. So it should have been much easier to kill those chameleon skinks, and I should have done it in one or two rounds of shooting. But uh, it it has not taken me. Uh, it's not not doing too well. My archers aren't doing too well and uh, aren't being able to to kill them. Um, it didn't help that one of my wizards miscast on the first spell of the game and got a small blast template on her. It wounded both of my mages, killed I think five or so of the archers, and then um, really uh, hurt their ability to do damage at range. Um, but other than that, I do have Shield of Thorns up on the uh, the Sea Guard over there. And the Sea Guard on the other side of the building, you can't see them, but they're fighting off uh, three units of Skinks. Um, and they're not doing so well doing it. They're... Um, they're taking a lot of casualties because my opponent is rolling excellently on his uh, his shooting attacks and getting a lot of poison and and a lot of wounds. So uh, this I believe is the end of the next turn. It's a bit more of a comprehensive uh, view of the battlefield. Um, as you can see, I was able to cast the withering on the stegodon. Um, when the stegodon charged in, it uh, didn't. It did a couple wounds. My I, I figured that my prince would take care of it pretty quickly. Uh, and do probably two wounds out of five, and then the uh, it already had two from shooting, and then hopefully the uh, the rest of the unit could come in and do that extra wound and kill it. But my pr prince missed every uh, well missed I think two two times even with rerolls, and then failed to wound, so he didn't do anything. Uh, and then the rest of the unit did pretty poorly as well. But I did cast withering on them from Lore of Shadows and uh, brought the stake on down to toughness three, and then was able to kill it off pretty quickly with um, with my unit. So that was really good. Um, other than that, the, uh, unit on the left-hand side there is being shot at by, um, by a lot of blowpipe fire, and my opponent, like I said, has been rolling really, really well on those blowpipes, getting a lot and a lot of, a lot of poison attacks, and just wiping out that unit slowly but surely, so that's, uh, that's not too fortunate for me, but hopefully I'll be able to hold up those, uh, skinks and stop them from shooting at the really important things like my mages. Um, speaking of the mages, they're not doing so well either, they're, that miscast early on, uh, brought both mages down to one wound. And uh, really, really hurt the um, the unit, so that allowed the uh, the chameleon skinks to really shoot them down uh, pretty quickly. So I'll have to keep them. Um, I'll have to keep them safe somehow. Uh, see if I can do it. And this is actually the end of my opponent's turn. So see if I can do it in my turn, um, and just wait for the uh, the blocks in the center to sort of beat my opponent's uh, units, and then uh, wrap around and get some points that way. So I think this is the end of the next round. Um, as you can see, my, the, my opponents wiped out one of the mages and all the archers um, and done some serious damage to the other uh, legionary unit on the, um, on the left-hand side of the photo. Uh, I've been able to whittle down his, um, his temple guard unit pretty well with my uh, phoenix guard. He just hasn't been able to get too many wounds through because of my 4 plus ward save, and I've been rolling pretty, pretty well on my wounds. So I think he's only got two or three Saurus left, and once those Saurus are dead... Uh, I'm gonna be able to to really get some get some damage um, put onto the slon and hopefully kill him, which will be an enormous number of points in my favor. Um, the other uh, the other sea guard unit is uh, obviously being um, being threatened on the flank there by that that other unit. What I think I'm gonna do is move them back and uh, try to cast, cast withering on that unit and then fire at the um, fire at them a couple rounds of shooting off and do some do some wounds before they get in and hopefully just hold them up a little bit with that unit. I'm uh, confident my Phoenix Guard, they're going to be able to, to take on a, a whole bunch of enemy units pretty quickly and um, and still do well. Uh, my opponent did kill my Battle Center Bear with the slon, the Skink on the Slon. He hit it two turns in a row and killed him, and I failed my Armor Save both times, so that was not very good. Um, and that was a, a bundle of points in my opponent's favor. So um, 
yeah, that's what's going on here. Uh, go to the next photo. I moved my, I charged the salon with my, um, with my prints, uh, and he was able, I think he ended up doing a couple wounds to the salon, uh, in there. I backed, I moved my, um, I, well, I backed up the, uh, the sea guard unit in to, so it could to get around to shooting off on that, uh, source unit. And then I moved the, uh, mage that was over there up to, uh, to try to get some spells off and just to protect it from all those blow pipes. And um, I moved the mage into the uh, actually into the sea guard unit, so it would be protected. Um, uh, other than that, I think what ended up happening was I cast withering on the um, on the unit, the source unit. I rolled really, really badly to hit. I got I think two or three hits and ended up killing one or two Saurus out of that, even though they were toughness one. Um, so that was a, an opportunity wasted by the dice there. Uh, my opponent in his turn, I forgot to mention this, was able to cast. Um, Speed of Light, because he's using Lore of Light, and uh, that basically takes out my rerolls and a lot of my uh, actual hitting power in close combat from those Phoenix Guard, but that's okay. They're still getting wounds through, and um, they are still able to uh, to hold that unit up and just get you know get that those wounds in and get get that combat res. And now with the Prince in there, they're uh, they're doing even better. So uh, I believe the uh, the unit on the left hand the sea guard unit on the left hand side of the of the uh, of the board got wiped out by the bull pipes so that was too bad but the deaths will be avenged. So here's the um, here's the, the photo of my opponent's turn. Obviously he's charged in all over the place. He got a charge off with his uh, one of his source units on the prince and the prince challenged uh, my opponent's dark scar veteran uh, in there and just killed him out outright just um, pretty easy. Uh, unfortunately for my opponent, the uh, Phoenix Guard were able to wipe out the remainder of the um, of the Temple Guard and are going to make short work of that Slon in the next round of combat. That uh, Sea Guard unit over on the right hand side got charged by um, both the uh, Saurus unit and the Skink unit. He was trying to get a uh, you know flank in there and uh, maybe some extra wounds. Um, and I wasn't able to do too much damage. I think I killed two or three guys and I challenged out his uh, Scar veteran who actually missed all of his attacks against my uh, my unit champion, so that was pretty good. Um, that gives me one more round of safety from the, the Scar Veteran before he starts eating up my unit. Um, but I'm, I'm not very, uh, I'm not really expecting that unit to survive. In the magic phase, something wacky happened, and I got a miscast again with my Shadow Wizard, who rolled a uh, 3 for the miscast, which is the uh, Large Blast Template Strength 10, Kills all the things. Um, she ended up dying from the uh, from the blast. I killed, I think, four uh, Sea Guard in the Sea Guard unit and one or two Phoenix Guard. But I also killed eight Soros Warriors from the two units. And I killed, uh, I, I put a wound on my Prince, and I think the Slon was just out, but otherwise it would have hit the Slon. But um, that was, uh, I had mixed feelings about that. I think it was a, <laughs> it was a funny way to end the game, just because... Um, you very spectacular. Killed a whole bunch of guys, and it was probably the only time that a uh, miscast has worked in sort of in my favor. So there you go. So after that, of course, uh, my opponent was able to get a whole bunch of wounds off on the Sea Guard unit uh, because they were so uh, outnumbered. Now that they'd lost models to the. Uh... So uh, here's a photo of my opponent's turn. As you can see, um, the prince has been dead. The uh, his units basically haven't haven't been able to charge really, mostly because a lot of them are skinks. So. They uh, don't want to charge anyway, and the Saurus were deemed just a little bit out of line of sight. It was right on the edge, depending on how you measure the line of sight. Uh, it it would have it might have hit the Phoenix Guard or not. We couldn't decide whether they could hit, so we decided to four up it, and the um, and the answer was that they were out of line of sight. So um, so there's that. So in my turn, and anyway, the Phoenix Guard. This is actually I think the the bottom of five. So in my turn six, the Phoenix Guard charged the Saurus. And uh, we're able to wipe them out and um, and turn around, and my opponent didn't really have anything he could do about it. So, um, so there's that. So there's the Phoenix Guard charging Saurus, and um, and they, they ended up breaking them and running them down. So that was a, a significant number of points in my favor. I also captured their banner because they flooded with it, and uh, the banner bearer died. So um, the, there you go. That was the end of the game. That was the uh, the bottom of six right there because my opponent had nothing he could really do. I think he, he got like around a shooting off on them but wasn't able to kill many guys because of their ward save. So 
that was good for me. Now, the Phoenix Guard are a monstrously expensive unit, so it might look like my opponent has a lot more points on the field, but actually it was about even. Uh, the Phoenix Guard are taking up 380 points of my army just sitting there, um, whereas my opponent only has a Saurus unit, a Scar Veteran, and a couple units of Skinks left. So um, the, the game actually came down to 21 points in my opponent's favor, which basically made it a tactical draw. So obviously it was a great game. It really came down to some, um, to some good rolling and uh, nail-biter moments pretty much. Um, but, uh, I, I hadn't played fantasy in a while. I think I'm going to try to go back, uh, in, in the next couple of days and play with a, uh, a, a, well, more painted army anyway, at least, um, uh, probably bring my lizardman out for a couple games and try to get some, uh, some games in with that. But, uh, great game to my opponent. I had a great time playing this game. We, we ended up playing for a really long time. I think we ended this game around midnight, um, it was only us and the uh, and the owner of the store in the uh, in the, the gaming store at this point, so we felt sort of bad about keeping him there, but he was pretty happy about getting the business. So, um, yeah, again, great game, and I hope you guys enjoyed this battle report. Stay tuned for some more.